you are welcome and good evening ma'am thank right you to uh, start your session Uh, good evening ma'am uh, good evening everybody all the faculty members those who are present here i feel that we all are one the same teaching ma fraternity ma'am your volume badha lijiye your voice is very faint uh, the teaching fraternity yes i think it is fine now uh, so we all belong to the same community the teaching community so welcome you all to this session of nep as you all are aware for the last so many months it's going to be year 2 that nep is going on in everybody's mind it's there the document is there approval is there but how the implementation to take place in the cbsc schools it's not only cbsc but how we are going to implement in our teaching learning methodologies so before i move on further i just would like to just give a glimpse of what exactly uh, we think of nep after a gap of 34 years on 29 july 2020 the union cabinet approved this policy the new policy what is it aim at it's paved the way for transformational reforms in school and higher education too the systems in the country additionally this was the main aim of it and it approved the cabinet also approved the renaming of ministry of human resource development to ministry of education you all should be aware of that now implementation because the first we start with implementation and then i'll go into the uh, details of it so how do we implement it there are some four to five points just want to so that once we, when we are going through the modules each module you can have this implementation points in your mind you can correlate and work on that any policy's effectiveness depends on its implementation so implementation to be in the spirit and intent of the policy the policy initiates a phased manner we cannot implement anything at one go it has to be phased prioritization will be important to ensure optimal sequencing you need to prioritize it comprehensiveness in implementation will be the key point comprehensiveness evaluate yourself and it has to be a collaborative implementation timely infusions of requested resources very important and finally you need to careful analyze and review of the linkages between multiple parallel implementation so finally when it has to be implemented and it should be in the operational mode 2030 the entire policy will be an operation mode so before i move on if you compare the earlier ncr uh, the 2005 and now the content and the philosophy is almost the same so when we talk now it is about access it is about equity it is about quality affordability and accountability and the policy document of the school education has you should know that it has eight chapters so the nep aim set i will tell you the eight chapters in short because in one hour i may not be able to get into the details of every chapter but i'll just browse through that and what is it aim at transform the indian education system to meet the needs of the 21st century why there should be a reform in the policy what is the uh, need for it so it aims at and the system needs to be met with the needs of the 21st century so for this you should be aware of the 21st century skill in my i had uh, slides you uh, i'll be sharing the 21st century skills the second one is to rectify poor literacy and numeracy outcomes associated with primary schools lot of importance is given to the primary schools focus on early childhood care 
structured, restructured the curriculum and the pedagogy. Reform assessment and exams and invested in teacher training. We need to invest the reforms, the assessment reforms in the examination and the teaching training, the PDCs. So there should be a holistic change in the education system of India. So making India compatible with global trends and empower especially the primary children towards the measure of early numeracy and literacy. So now the first chapter where I was talking about the eight one, the ECE, that is the foundation literacy and numeracy, universal access, curriculum and pedagogy, teachers, then inclusive education, effective governance, regularization and accreditation. So the fundamental difference between this policy with the earlier policy also you should know. The first one, before coming up with the present policy, people have discussed minutely and at micro level the problems affecting the school education and try to find out the solution looking at the availability of the resources and the competencies. Aiming to build best education system through the local, flexible, in system to choose their own path. No compulsion or restrictions. Creativity and critical thinking and also about using technology, ICP in education. Now, let us see the evolution of the education policies earlier and now. Evolution of our education policy in India. Universal Education Commission was there in 1948-49. Secondary Education Commission was there in 1952-53. to 53. See, from when it started, 1948 onward it started. Education, uh, Dr. Uh, Dines Kothari, it was in 1964 to 66. The National Policy of Education, that is NPE, not NEP, NPE, which was in 1968. That was the first NEP. Then the National Policy of Education in 1986 was the second. And 1986, National Policy of Education was modified in 1992. Now it is the third national education policy which we are working on. Now, now let's see the vision of the policy. What does the vision speak? When you read the slide, you will know exactly the vision, but in nutshell, I would like to tell you, it aims at making India a global knowledge superpower. In short, when you read all these three points, in short, India, is to make a global power. Now the first policy, the vision of the policy, an education system that contributes to an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all. This is the vision. Then based on the vision, we need to work on our objectives. Develop a deep sense of respect towards the fundamental rights, duties, and constitutional values bonding with one's country and a conscious awareness of one's roles and responsibilities of a changing world. So develop, instill skills, values, dispositions that support responsible commitment to the human rights. Sustainable development, again, the global well-being, thereby reflecting a truly global citizen. So based on the background of policy, how it has evolved and with the vision of the policy. Let's move ahead with the key principles of the policy. When you look at this slide, there are eight principles, key principles. In short, let me just explain it to you. Encourage innovation, not uniformity. When you look at the whole slide as one core concept, Encourage innovation, not uniformity. Reward performance, not compliance. Fund students, not schools. Promote autonomy, not control. Track outputs, not inputs. So the three core values, what we get from the principles is 
choice versus choice and competition, autonomy and accountability, innovations and the communities. Now, respect for diversity in the local context must respect diversity reflected in the it should reflect in the curriculum it should reflect in the policy this will make think globally and act locally so our actions must lead us to diversity is the hallmark of india that is the diversity diversity in people diversity in culture diversity in religion diversity in language and we need to accept the differences and it has to be manifested in our educational curriculum pedagogy and policy the diversity and the local context think globally and act locally now the second one is equity and inclusion we must respect everybody irrespect of the caste creed and religion we should respect every individual as an individual now the next one is comes to the community participation when we talk about community participation we need to accept it is a miniature society our school is in a community make people participate facilitations for philanthropists private and public participation community participation is very very important now use of technology in teaching and learning we use technology to remove the barriers it is a boon and a blessing for all of us but there is a dichotomy when we use the technology as most of them are not connected so when we talk about use of technology first we think of connecting the people those who are staying remotely now emphasize conceptual understanding education is not rote learning it's a very promising decision it has to be concepts conceptualized experiential learning competency based learning not be that the we are learning is taking place for the students preparing for the exam it should not be that we are testing them only for understanding the concepts now unique capabilities as you all are aware you all are in the teaching profession that we should take care of every child and every child is unique he is an individual every individual potential must be respected and taken care we cannot have education that is same for all one dress will not fit all and when multiple intelligence comes into existence we need to recognize that particular intelligence acknowledge it recognize it acknowledge it and nurture it if you really would like to um, follow the unique capabilities and help the children with unique capabilities now next comes the critical thinking and creativity these are the 21st century skills of course in the further slides i will just browse through all the um, skills the 21st century skills now it goes you know critical thinking must take people to think critically they should be committed out of the box thinking think for others right and continuous review if there is no continuous review there is no continuous feedback there will not be growth so review will sustain the results and we we will research in new ways and in this people will think oh what was the gap how to fill up the gap and you will be able to discuss opportunity gaps and performance gaps when you continuously review it now transforming curricular and pedagogical structure when you look at this slide you can just uh, make out that what was the previous academic structure previous means now what we are following that is ages 2 6 to 8 uh, and then um, um, next comes our 10 uh, that is ages 6 to 16 these are the two what we are following now the academic structure that is we call it as primary 
pre primary primary middle secondary and senior secretary now what is the new pedagogy which will be there just look at the slide here the new curricula the new curricula and the pedagogical structure of the school education will it has undergone a thorough change to meet why are we changing this what is the need for it to be changed to develop because we need to meet the development needs and insist the school children for their development at different stages earlier the pre primary below the pre primary 3 plus h was not coming under the formal this thing but now with this new pedagogical curricular structure 3 plus will come under the structured domain so the nep gives a trust more trust more emphasis on early childhood care and education and this replaces the 10 plus 2 school structure with 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 curricular structure that is corresponding you just look at the slide you will understand corresponding to the ages 3 to 8 8 to 10 11 to 14 and 14 to 18 years now the 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure what does it comprise that is 12 years of schooling and 3 years of preschool that we have given other anganwadi so the 5 plus 3 plus 4 includes a foundational stage from 3 to 8 years of pre primary education and 8 to 11 years preparatory stage and from 11 to 14 and second stage comprises of 14 to 18 years am i clear in this foundational stage multi level play activity based learning preparatory stage discovery activity based and interactive classroom learning middle stage the third stage experiential learning in science maths arts social science and humanities and at the secondary stage greater critical thinking multidisciplinary study flexibility and student choice of subjects so here the school students to take exam only for classes 3 5 and 8 and assessment in other uh, years that is other than the 3 5 and 8 will shift to a regular and formative style that will be more competency based to promote learning note this point that it will be more like a competency based rather uh, to promote learning rather, uh, rather than promoting the rote learning so your question paper designs would change and it will develop testing higher order skills hot questions so what are higher order thing uh, questions analysis critical thinking conceptual clarity so shift to competency based teaching learning and assessment now we need to shift from the normal testing to the competency based teaching learning and assessment so the next slide so we need to promote emphasis on transforming assessment so here emphasis on transforming assessment for optimizing learning and development of all students with a focus on regular formative and competency based learning promoting critical and creative thinking aligned to the 21st century classrooms so how many of you can put it in the chat box how many of you have created 21st century classrooms in your school shifting the traditional assessment to competency focused are you doing it are you doing are you testing the children only to test their knowledge or are you testing the children to test the knowledge and its applicability on real life situations are they applying it in the real life situation we need to track the students comprehensively and frequently in the traditional method what we are following it is the quantity what we are teaching is the syllabus completion course completion without 80% of the children mastering the 80% of the concepts on a particular topic the teachers move to the next topic just in a hurry to finish it but nep has given you a scope 
to track the student progress comprehensively and frequently. And you must use the diagnostics assessment. The performance assessment has to be there. Design tools and resources to acquire learning outcomes. Is your lesson planning consisting of learning outcomes? Are you mentioning the stakeholders' responsibility in the learning outcomes? Are you mentioning the capabilities of the students in the learning, uh, in your lesson planning, the pedagogy, types of pedagogy? And what are the strengths? What are you going to, what is the mode of it? And what kind of resources are you using? How many of you are getting into the Diksha portal, the best resources, the best resources? You get into the Diksha portal and uh, the number of resources you get it, then you can explore for others. How many of you are using regularly the portal, the CBSC portal? We must promote learning and development of students. So focus on assessment for learning. Test high order skills, analysis, critical thinking, conceptual clarity. When you're making a question paper, Make it in alignment with Bloom's taxonomy. Each question, just mention whether it is understanding the hierarchy of the uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Visit the re, uh, uh, redesigned Bloom's taxonomy. If you're making a, a bit paper, a multiple choice question, even that multiple choice question also, you should know that this particular question is testing which kind of skill. Whether it is you are testing it for diagnosis, whether it is you are testing for the performance. So critical thinking questions to be, sorry, critical thinking questions to be uh, put in, in your uh, question paper. Conceptual clarity has to be there. So it helps the entire schooling system in revising continuous teaching learning process. So once you teach in the class, competency-based learning, and then when you assess, when you diagnose, and then when you review continuously and frequently, you will know what are your performance gaps, what are the opportunity gaps the school is having, then the learning process will be reviewed and checked and accordingly, you will change your planning. So continuous tracking of learning outcomes is very important. Right? So reducing curriculum to the core essential to minimize rote learning. That's what I was just insisting on that. Let's not get into completion of the syllabus. Let's get into the core essentials, which are the basics for the higher classes or the higher grades. So the next one is promoting sport integrated and art integrated learning in the classrooms for holistic development. This is one of the best things which we really liked it. Sports integrated. If a child is learning two table, so when you integrate a sports, uh, experiential learning, there are many examples. When you integrate sports into your curriculum, take the children out. When you're teaching liver, first, second, three types of liver in uh, your science, take them to the ground and teach them. Make them sit on the, on the seesaw. Teach them. You need not have a science park in the school but you can create your own activities for integrating sports. And this is how you integrate your experiential learning. Two table is there. Put a song, do ekam do 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 dinishar in Hindi, do tina che. And then let them clap, tap, and then move around. Right? The next one is art integration. Ek Bharat traced Bharat. Hope all of you are doing the same. Art integrated, well, earlier also we were doing it. Art integration was there, sport integration was there, but we were doing it unaware of what we were doing. Now you should make a conscious effort that how we are going to include sports, how we are going to include art in your teaching learning methodology. When you're making the lesson plan itself, kindly include, have a column in your lesson plan, in the pedagogy column, you have in your lesson plan what all uh, uh, things you are integrating, activities, each chapter, co-scholastic activities, scholastic activities. Now, the salient features of the foundational stage, 
as I discussed earlier and mentioned to you all in, uh, earlier, introducing formal learning in the school from ages three, the most crucial period. Why did all of us thought of introducing Anganwadi or pre-primary and coming into the domain? Earlier, it was only from class one. But why the pre-primary and Anganwadi is given and a structured curriculum will be there for them? Because the most critical period of the brain development of the children is that period, the young period, the pre-primary, when they, till they come to class one. This period is neglected. If the crucial development domain, it will leave a lifelong deficiency in the child's development. So if this, uh, uh, this um, domain is taken care properly by us during the school hours, in the school system, in our pedagogical changes, definitely in another 20 to 30 years, India would really flourish. So these are associated, this age is associated with the skills and the behavior. So what adversely affect their academic performance will definitely depends on the pre-primary and the primary stage of a school. So the critical importance of appropriate care and stimulation of the brain at the early years for a healthy brain, development and growth of the learner made it imperative to think, all of us to think, to formally introduce early childhood system, why it was introduced, and of an age appropriate system. It should be play with child-centered system of learning based on so many researchers on the pedagogy. Now, early childhood care and education, which is the foundation for learning. Here it consists of flexible, Multifaceted, just kindly go through this thing. In short, I will just uh, brief you this. Ideally, it consists of flexible. Need not, you know, like if a child is not able to do addition, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3. If he's not able to do it, how much effort did you put to make the child learn the addition? How many activities have you done? to make the child learn that particular concept? Did you include sports? Did you include uh, art in teaching the child the same concept? I tell you, if you would have done it, even the slow learners, those who need the help, definitely would have learned. Now, ensuring that all children enter grade one are school ready by 2030. Attain optimum outcome in the domain of physical and motor development, which I was uh, talking to you regarding the brain development, the cognitive development, social, emotional development, cultural and artistic development, development of communication, early languages, literacy and numeracy, which is very, very important. Foundational literacy. It is a national mission. And NEP provides that at the culmination of class three, by the end of the class three, the child should be perfect in his language, in num numeracy and literacy. He should be able to speak. And there, there will be a school-based assessment that will be conducted to assess the foundational literacy and numeracy. Are we doing it? Review your own pedagogies. Review your own assessments. Are we doing it? Reflect on it. Did you make any time the performance gaps? A list of performance. Did you any time make the learning gaps or opportunity gaps? At times, you know, children don't learn. Children don't attain a, a particular skill because there was no opportunity provided to them. Put them in opportunity gaps. Performance gaps where the children could not perform because of the structures and systems of the school. So you need to change your structure and systems of the school. What kind of culture the school has? What kind of uh, remediation you're giving to the children? Put it in your systems. Put it in the structure of the school. So the standards for this will be established by a new national assessment center. A national assessment center will be put to test whether what we are doing is appropriate to what 
we want to do. So NEP will be establishing Parak, P A R A K H, kindly pen down, Parak. It would be an assessment center where it will be testing. It's a um, centralized one and then standardized where a particular concepts will be given and will be testing that by the end of class three, how much the child should learn as a normal uh, literacy and numeracy at the end of five class, fifth class, at the end of eighth class, right? So it will review whether we are following the right track or not. So kindly depend on Parak. Parak is performance, assessment, review, and analysis of knowledge for holistic development. Now, attainment of foundation literacy and numeracy by grade three in mission mode. This I've already uh, appraised you all. So there will be a book promotion that is national book promotion policy will be formulated and public and schools library will be expanded and more for the pre-primary, a separate library to be established in every school. National Mission on Foundation Literacy and Numeracy and uh, told you that it will be examined and assessed by a new national assessment center that is Parak. Now, what are the foundational skills? Universal acquisition of foundational learning skills. Then early learning, focus on reading, writing and maths. It, it is given more emphasis because as for the research conducted, there were gaps in the early learning. Children, those who have come to class five, passing out the pre-primary and primary, not able to read and write or do simple mathematics basics. So it made us, it is imperative for us to give more importance at the primary stages, early learning. Three months place play school will be there. Three months play-based school preparation module for the grade one students in the beginning. National repository. Such a great idea. You know, high quality teaching and learning resources on Diksha. I was just telling you, just get into Diksha portal. Whatever you want, browse through it, you're going to get it. Libraries, school libraries, including digital libraries to be leveraged, to be started. Have you ever thought of these little ones? Pre-primary, no, um, uh, the Anganwadi, three plus onwards. Did we ever think of having a digital library for them? Did we ever thought of, uh, uh, did we ever think of having a separate library and they get into the library, have different corners in a particular uh, room? Give them a sitting, uh, this thing. Uh, uh, do they have a, a library shelves where the child can go and browse? Did you give a pictorial representation that these books of this kind are available in this shelf? Are you doing it? Or it is only the class library we have for these little ones. Think, review, and try to upgrade. Now, curtailing dropouts and ensuring universal access to education at all levels. To bring children back to school and prevent children dropping out of the following steps were taken. If you just read, provide regular training teachers at every stage, special Care shall be given to ensure that no school remains deficient on infrastructure support. So infrastructure support will be given so that there are no dropouts. Universal participation in school by carefully tracking the students. You need to track the students and the learning levels. Suppose a child is not able to reach to a particular learning level in a particular class. And then you don't promote the child. You say your child is not capable of learning. We will repeat his class. What efforts have you given to test his learning levels? How are you doing? Did you test frequently? Did you have a diagnostic test? Did you tell the parent to uh, help him in a particular concept? And what is your contribution towards that particular child? Have you... Uh, um, uh, given a uh, treatment, have you given an extra peer help to the child? Did you adopt the child in the school? Most of the schools, what they do, you know, the slow, uh, the children, those who need remediation, they one teacher adopts one child in the school and takes care of the child as a foster parent. That training also will be given 
to curtail the drop of rates. Community partnerships in terms of expertise and infrastructure support. Scope of school education will be broadened to facilitate multi pathways of learning that is formal and informal education that is both open and distant schooling programs. It is offered by the National Institute of Open Schooling. If you get into National Institute of Open Schooling website, you will know all the details and state open schools will be expanded and strengthened. Now, let's move to the next one, the highlights of the pedagogical structure. The total NEP is based on the pedagogical structure and it is directly proportionate to your learning outcomes. You go to a class, if you are not there with the frame of the mind that what is your learning outcome, kindly take, don't go to the class that day. If you are not clear, what are you going to teach? And what are you expecting from the students? The learning outcome has to be there in the teacher's mind before entering a class. Are the children doing the self-reflection there? How much they have learned, what they've learned. If you have not done it, kindly do it. Self-reflection cards can be given to the students. And when you exit the class, ask the children to reflect on what they have learned and write it in the card and give it to you you would know at what level the learning has taken place. Put the learning outcomes in, the, in, in your bulletin board in the class that what are you expecting the child to learn? So competency-based education, that preparing and implementation pedagogical plans based on competency and outcome-based education for students. Competency-based is the core concepts directly proportionate to learning outcomes then integration of subject so throughout you need to integrate art sports integration ict integration storytelling based pedagogics amount they all are the standard ones there are many when i uh, uh, when i take up uh, competency based learning in that pedagogy itself is an half an hour uh, um, uh, time taking uh, uh, concept so here only a little bit we are able to tell you that pedagogy among others are standard pedagogies you all might be having uh, various pedagogies uh, kindly in this pedagogy just see what all things you can integrate right one project you can integrate all the subjects including your course scholastic music your sports now development of scientific temper development of creativity development of critical thinking so scientific temper and inclusion of knowledge and practice of human institutional values patriotism sacrifice, non-violence, truth, honesty, and peace. And these are the things, the sacrifice, non-violence, truth, honesty, and peace. These are the things which cannot be taught as a lesson. It has to be, and uh, you know, you need to plan for it. How are you going to inculcate these values? Let them listen to the best speeches of the great personalities. Let them read the letters of the great people. Let the children be viewing a good anecdotes from the people with patriotism. Those who have done sacrifices and with nonviolence, how they could go ahead. Honesty, how do you teach honesty? Can you tell the children, be honest, be honest, but the child doesn't know. What does honesty mean? How are you going to teach it? It's a challenge. You need to work on the processes, the pedagogical processes to implement all this. Now, among subjects learning, no hard separation between curricular, co-curricular, extracurricular. Like suppose, uh, in music, now how do we give them grades, right? We have a rating scale. We give them a song, learn this song, and then the music, dance, or any other course scholastic is done. But now it will not be so. A music teacher can get into the class, an English class, and if the child is reciting a poem with his music, which he has composed, 
the music teacher can award there is no hard separation between curricular co curricular and extra curricular activities equal emphasis will be given academic and vocational science and humanities a child who has taken physics chemistry bio can even opt for music but of course when it goes to higher when it goes to pl uh, plus 1 and plus 2 the combinations even our higher university level system also to be changed the examiner pattern also there to be changed if we are giving the options to the children now sports arts and academics it is to close the gap between the correct state and what truly needed by the classroom transaction now emphasis on digital literacy emphasis coding compute uh, computational thinking ethical and moral reasoning have questions have reasoning questions when you're having your class test kindly include one question earlier days we used to include now also i think most of the schools include how the children are writing the handwriting for the neatness in the annual examination or in the half yearly examination one mark is given or so just to check whether the child is writing neatly handwriting or not in the same way why don't you have emphasis on digital literacy moral reasoning questions can be given ethical reasoning questions can be given when and where possible so promotion of multilinguistic teaching promoting states to enter into bilateral agreements with nearby states to high language teachers now here multilinguism like for andhra when we are doing ek bharat shreshth to bharat our um, uh, uh, attached state is punjab you know uh, we have asked one of our uh, punjabi teachers to make the children speak at least few sentences of punjab like that multilingualism can be taken into account and can be encouraged now this 21st century skills foreign languages can be included from class 9th onwards now encouraging 21st century skills in the classroom why do you think they are required any um, uh, i need your uh, references please your responses why do we encourage 21st century skills in the classroom your responses please i'm not able to see anybody responding 21st century skills for holistic development the child he might not be good in his maths but if he is good in horse riding let him let him have that skill if he is not good in science and he is good in music let him have if he is uh, not able to work in a team but if he is very good at digital literacy develop that acknowledge the uniqueness of the child you respect you acknowledge you have to identify first you need to acknowledge it and then you need to nurture it so in the 21st century skills interdisciplinary you can integrate all these and critical thinking creativity collaboration curiosity communication scientific temper ethics very important ethics and integrity social responsibility health and fitness creativity because now uh, we are running short of time i may not be able to go in detail the each one kindly you just uh, uh, go through it and then uh, if you browse through you will know the 21st century skills in the classroom how do we incorporate now introduction of contemporary subjects now flexibility for learners now earlier slide which i was telling you that there is no hard separation between curricular co curricular extra curricular academics vocational science and humanities sports art and academics here the introduction of contemporary subjects also give the learners a choice of the learning trajectories and programs 
when there is no hard separation between arts and science between curricular and co curricular subjects and skills to be learned by all students to help them become successful innovative adaptive and productive human beings why have we gone for no um, separation between uh, curricular and co curricular arts and science and now why are we introducing the contemporary subject to become the students to become first they will have their own choice when you have your own choice you love doing that thing so you become successful you become innovative you adapt to it even though it is tough if you like it you will do it and be productive human beings so artificial intelligence holistic uh, health data science organic living design thinking machine learning right now year long course during grade 6 and 8 surveys and hand on experience of sampling of important vocational clubs carpentry agri work gardening pottery you know decided by states and local and mapped by the local skills needed so these are the year long courses during grade 6 to 8 these are the courses will be offered to the students now maths and computational thinking what does it mean increase emphasis throughout the school years starting with the foundational stage we have started from the foundational stage right importance of numeracy and literacy the use of a variety of innovative methods including regular use of puzzles games mathematical thinking and make it more enjoying and engaging if the children love it they do it they themselves adapt to it if they don't like a particular subject try to integrate sports in it try to integrate art in it and you see how the learning would take place so introduction of activities involving coding in the middle stage now emphasis on education vocational education 10 day bagless periods during grades 6 and 8 for students to interim and local vocational experts such as carpenters gardener potters artists will come and they do it one day 10 day bagless this thing one day in a week you can do or it depends on the school curriculum how you do it but have a 10 day bagless period just call somebody from outside the experts vocational experts have a class for these children they will learn it they'll enjoy it at the same time the monotony will be broken in this ship opportunities to learn vocational subjects throughout grade 6 to 12 a very good concept opportunities will be given to the children to learn the vocational subjects vocational courses are available through online mode through periodic exposure to activities outside school like meeting local artists craftsmen right to open and distance learning also it will be offered and at least 50% of the learner shall have exposure to vocational lecture what a fantastic idea by 2025 50% of the learners to have vocational education now knowledge of india when we say act globally and think locally you should know your history your roots so knowledge from ancient india and its contribution to the modern india and these successes have let the children aware of it how do you do it work on this health education basic training in health including preventive health mental health and well being i think most of the schools are following mental health and well being but nutrition i don't think many schools are giving a nutrition calendar to the students we do give here in our school uh, we have a nutrition calendar that on monday uh, these are the things and what are the uh, nutrients which are present here and call an expert to talk on nutrition expert talk on mental health and well being you can have your children uh, um, uh, go to a place visit a place where uh, a preventive health a, a hospital not now but a place where the doctor can come and then tell them about health personal and public hygiene and first aid let each class 
have a first aid box and one uh, student to be the monitor of that class as the first aid monitor we do have it in our school detrimental and damaging effects of the bad habits that are alcohol tobacco and other drugs so you can have experts coming to your school and talking about this health and you have your own health education teacher and have activities in that leveraging the power of multilingualism and language learning primary language language of instruction in the school to drop out or school of fail in the early stages if the child doesn't know how to read and write english at home also there is no provision for him to know english and if it is taught in english his subjects definitely he would fail so if for that particular child or that set of children if the language is mother tongue they will be able to learn better now uh, not only mother tongue now at present we are having a problem here hindi as a second language we are facing the problem the parents come and request to us ma'am why don't you give the meaning of a particular hindi word in telugu so that we will understand how to teach our child but if hindi we give a meaning in telugu the child will not be able to learn hindi as hindi because he is comfortable with his mother tongue so you need to devise your own tools to work on such problems home language local language as media for instruction wherever possible until at least grade 5 if it is possible if not you can go ahead what it is going on the languages of india you can have a project activity in the school to familiarize with the diversity of the language in the country ek bharat shreshth bharat is the best activity for this now national curriculum framework for school education ncfc and the textbooks right the formulation of new and comprehensive national curriculum framework for school education will be undertaken by the ncrt based on the principles of this national education policy and will be available in all regional languages kindly note down a comprehensive national curricular framework for school education will be undertaken by the ncrt right all textbooks will aim to contain the core material deemed on a national level uniformity at the national level contain any desired nuances and supplementary material as per the local context and needs there will be a common book at national level but at the same time the local regional the requirements might be different so supplement uh, material supplementary material would be given so wherever possible schools and teachers will also have choices in the textbook they employ from among the textbooks that contain the national and the local material so you'll have a choice to choose now transforming assessment for student development so aims of the assessment so when you're assessing now your question paper you start doing it see implementation you need not wait for this assessment to happen only in after 2 3 years once the implementation starts you can start now itself try to change your question paper what is your aim of assessment put that and then try, uh, try to change it shift from rote memorization skill to formative is more competency based assessment so rote memorization to competency assessment you need to shift from rote to the performance assessment and are you testing them for diagnosis or are you testing them to know to test the core concepts which they have learned which they will just implement in there which they are going to implement or which they can use in their real life promotes learning and development of students bloom's taxonomy very important when you are doing your assessments and rubrics to be made when you are reviewing it test high order skills analysis critical thinking conceptual clarity 
assessment for learning optimized learning and development for all students this will be the underlying principle for levels at all levels so hope i am clear in this what should be the aim of the assessment why are you assessing the child a child who gets 100 out of 100 and he is not able to just use a particular skill which has put it on the paper and use it in his real life do you think it is learning and you have assessed the child right think it over review your thoughts review your assessment policies now transforming as tracking students progress across the years i'll just uh, uh, one minute give me one minute please just give me one minute there is some technical issue here just one minute there are only two three slides and suddenly i don't know Yes please I'm so sorry about it just 2 minutes Right Now uh regret for this uh delay now transforming assessment and tracking students progress across the year that all students will take school examination as told earlier the 3 5 and 8 right uh, grade 3 grade 5 grade 8 grade 10 and grade 12 of course the board examination will be there or not we cannot comment on that but it will be regular and it will be more formative and it will be conceptual competency based learning the question paper would be that test score concepts and move away from rote memorization kindly pen down this student data is anonymized public disclosure by schools by the overall outcomes it should be only the learning outcomes which you are going to showcase use data for continuous monitoring and improvement right so achievement of the basic learning outcome through the assessment is the core concepts and the knowledge from the national and the local curriculum so kindly learning outcomes and application of the knowledge which i have been telling you right from the beginning now redesigning the report cards to assess holistic development of each child so your report card should be 360 degree holistic report card it should be uh, accompanied it should be accompanied by the parent teacher meetings you know so that the parent that's what when i told you when you're making your lesson plan also stakeholders involvement very important when are you having it when you make a lesson plan your year structure that time itself you write there the stakeholders involvement that mean the parents or any other outsider what involvement is there in the teaching learning process of the child the result of the school examination to be only for development purpose of the school education public disclosure by the schools of overall student outcomes only right for continuous monitoring it has to be for continuous monitoring and for improvement so prog progress in project based and inquiry based learning your question paper or your report card should give an indication of the progress of project based inquiry based learning how are you going to test so progress in cognitive and effective psychomotor domain in interactive questionnaire for parent teacher and student this is very important what you can do is end of every month 
you give a questionnaire to the teacher, uh, sorry, to the parent. And how much learning has taken place? Let the parent answer. You will be able to review yourself. And then the teacher assessment. Teacher should assess herself. Have a teacher assessment sheet when you enter a class. And then you give a diagnostic test before you come out of the class. Just five questions. And then with that, you will know exactly where do you stand. And you rate your percentage, your own. How do you do it? That is your own self-assessment. And then at the same time, your uh, peers can do your assessment. Anyway, your principal and your higher-ups would be doing your assessment. Now, for the students, self-assessment and peer assessment. Now, regarding uh, these guidelines and all prepared by the NCRT, the assessment guidelines, which will be shared with you all, is prepared by the NCRT in consultation with the major stakeholders, Board of Assessments, kindly pen down these, National Assessment Center for the School Education. Transformation in the assessment system by 22-23 academic session to align the national curriculum framework for school education. So it will change. The assessment system would change to align with the National Curriculum Framework by 22-23. Now, the National Assessment Center for School Education advise the school boards. This will advise the school boards regarding new assessment patterns and latest researches for promoting collaboration between schools and boards. Now, how we have hubs of learning? How, how are we collaborating? Suppose one optional, um, uh, you have one occasional, uh, this thing we will give, suppose 10 uh, vocational uh, courses in that school. But you have only three staff members to have that, but you have children opting for more vocational thing. You can collaborate with the, lead, uh, with the collaborative schools near your area. Exchange of uh, teachers to become the instrument in sharing best practices between the school and the boards. Shifting their assessment pattern towards meeting the skill requirements of the 21st century and stated objectives of this policy. Right? I think this is clear. Now, teachers who are the core and heart of this NEP, the implementation is in our hands. Unless and until we take an initiative, implementation in the schools is a challenge. So teachers, we need to think for ourselves. So what does NEP say about the teachers? The four-year integrated be it for minimum degree qualification for teaching that includes student teaching at local schools by 2030. And two years be it for applicants with an existing bachelor degree in other specialized subjects. One year be it for those who have completed equivalent of four years multidisciplinary bachelor's degree or obtained a master's degree. So all BA programs will include training and time testing test, uh, uh, training techniques in pedagogy, multi-level teaching and evaluation, teaching children with disability, <coughs> teaching children with special interests or talents, Use of education technology, learner-centered and collaborative learning. What a paradigm shift. When I did my beard way back, I think 33 years back or so, 34 years back, when I did my beard, we were not having all these as a concept one. But now we are blessed that we are getting exposure towards the time-tested pedagogies multi-level teaching, evaluation, teach children how to teach the children with disability. Now, teachers and teachers' education, the national professional standard for teachers will be developed. A test will be developed, national professional standard test. A professional standards will be reviewed and revised by 2030. Now, for teachers, we have seated the same way. There will be a national professional standard. Quality four-year integrated BA programs. Transparency and transfers through online computerized systems. Teaching ability test will be strengthened. Sharing of teachers across schools will be permitted. School complexes will hire eminent personality experts as master instructors. Suppose in your locality, there are five schools. 
and you're calling an expert and one of the schools if it can have a capacity of some thousand students you can take your students to that particular school and listen to the expert at the same time that expert can visit your school and those children also can join your school you can share a technology based comprehensive teaching recruiting plan requirement plan teachers education will gradually be moved by 2030 into multidisciplinary colleges and universities so aims to support and not to teachers through all phases of their tenure all phases see you, we all are the core of this nep the implementation or in the schools the teaching learning process the heart of it are the teachers the preparation time there will be a support recruitment deployment and transfer there will be a support in the classroom there will be a support and pdc is the professional development too now continuous professional development improving standard teachers will undertake 50 hours of cpd every year driven by their own interests 50 hours teachers education to include supporting gifted children training will be effective online educator workshop and training programs for development of school leaders and principals these are the various domains now 21st century teaching learning and assessment will be a part heart of all teaching learning programs anganwadi workers teacher trained in early literacy numeracy and other relevant aspect of ecce inclusion and equity will become a key aspect of teacher education and secondary specialization to be created for teaching kids with disability so every teacher will be well equipped to teach the kid with disability education is the single greatest tool for achieving social justice and equity nep seeks bridge gender and social category gaps at all levels of school education right in the beginning i've said equity affordability is the core concept the five principles so inclusive good quality education is the foundation for dynamic and equitable society and it is in our hands the teaching fraternity that how we are going to do it so focus on social and economically and disadvantaged groups that means gender identities socio cultural identities that means caste creed gender identities female and transgender individuals geographical identities students from villages small towns aspirational districts disability including learning disability socio economic conditions migrant communities low income household children of vulnerable situation victims of trafficking orphans including child banging in urban areas and urban poor separate strategies will be formulated for focused attention for reducing each category wise gap in the school education education for all how to ensure equitable and uh, inclusive education how do we improve it increase participation of sedes in the school system will be strengthened will be declared by educational disadvantage the gender inclusion funds inclusion and equal participation of children with disability in early childhood education schooling system will be accorded high priority home based education will be the choice those who can't go to the school teachers must be helped to identify such learning disabilities early and plan significantly for their mitigation urgent need for additional special educator for certain areas for school education alternative forms of schools encouraged to preserve their tradition alternate pedagogical styles students in such schools would be encouraged to appear for state and other boards special attention will be uh, given to disparities for these uh, uh, civil caste and tribes opening ncc wings in secondary and higher school will be encouraged of course we do have now but maybe it will be made mandatory later now efficient uh, just i'll take another five minutes efficient resourcing and effective governance through school complexes and uh, uh, clusters at present we do have school complexes 
sahodia complexes we do have uh, hubs of learning schools collaborative learning so to ensure educate number of trained uh, counselors trained workers and teachers for teaching all subjects art science sports vocational subjects will be shared educate resources labs and all also can be shared a sense of community built to overcome isolation of students and schools it will be in collaboration cooperation and support across school for education children of disability improved governance of school system by all final decisions to principal teachers and other stakeholders within each group of schools and treating such a group of schools with ranges now let's move to the final one the cbsc initiatives and this is now the nep session nep for all the teachers across india it's a cbsc initiative and it's going on very well every day n number of teachers are getting trained in this nep unless and until you are aware what how will you do it how will you implement it now standardized setting and accreditation for school education nep on standardized setting and accreditation will be there the key feature of sqa for cbsc schools the self assessment tools for schools so cbsc has developed a comprehensive framework termed as school quality assessment and assurance okay the disclosure will be the school level based on the proficiency of each school so each school will be tested accreditation will be done now transforming assessment and examination this i have already discussed with you now initiative for capacity building for teachers cbsc offers generic as well as specific teacher training programs policy for in service teacher training 10 minute mock classroom demonstration is there by cbsc right so foundation numeracy and uh, literacy training module is under process it will come out any time and an intimation will be given to you in the diksha portal now co curricular initiatives art sports integration principal as pedagogical leaders implementation of experiential learning maths and hindi at two levels now anyway maths is there hindi also at two levels english and sanskrit will also be introduced at two levels from 21 22 introduction of nine vocational courses of 12 hours duration from 6 to 8 in 2020 ensuring competency based learning in the schools this i have already explained student enrichment activities see this is very important aryabhatta ganit challenge heritage quest ek bharat shreshth bharat cbsc science challenge science exhibition khelo india expression series reading challenge expectations from the school focus on core essential learning outcomes kindly pen down all the participants what are we expecting from the schools focus on core essentials or learning outcomes stress on importance of foundation skills of literacy and numeracy bring changes in classroom teaching in alignment with nep 2020 learning outcomes everywhere learning outcomes and for social emotionally disadvantaged groups also and gifted children also and you need to nurture them bring changes in the assessment pattern remove separation between subjects and disciplines vocational training to students enable access and retention self audit on school quality assurance and accreditation framework have your own audit questions if you would like to uh, have a copy of it i can share with you all what kind of questions you should have to audit your own school provide enabling resources both for students and teachers ensure capacity building at all levels 50 hours of cpd nista needs to be compulsory completed by the uh, teachers mentoring of teachers curriculum pedagogy swayam and diksha teaching english languages implementation of holistic progress card creation of safe and secure environment in school time stretched and new pedagogies engage with parents and community for a positive learning environment and i think with this i've taken your 10 to 15 minutes extra but i think this was all required which we couldn't skip anything and um, uh, thank you so much 
मैम रमा मैम हेलो हेलो मैम यस मैम माय आई एम देयर ओनली सो आई इट वाज यू नो रियली वेरी नाइसली डन एंड आई थिंक यू हैव राइटली स्किप द पार्ट व्हिच वाज नॉट टू बी इलैबोरेटेड एंड एम्फसाइज द पॉइंट्स व्हिच नीडेड यू नो अटेंशन सो इट वाज अ वंडरफुल सेशन Thank so you, i was even you know appreciating it and talking yes, to dr so uh, thank you so much ma'am and uh, yeah and all the teachers must join uh, they must uh, uh, join the questions they must do the questions by clicking on the link which will be available to them yes, and it will remain open till 9 pm today okay ma'am and there will be an attendance link also ha na sir attendance ah, link, attendance link, right, attendance right. link is also there which they must mark before okay, they leave the session mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much ma'am thanks a lot uh, ma'am thank you very much ma'am rama ma'am for giving me this opportunity and thank you to the whole cabc headquarters who trusted me and given this afternoon i was not aware that i had to present but uh, i could uh, no no it was <laughs> it was wonderful very good session it was you enjoyed thank you okay. so much ma'am thank okay. you